friends welcome to chyas how are you i hope you are doing well so friends as you know that on our channel we are covering the syllabus of upsc civil services and we are particularly targeting the students of upsc csc 2019 so for this purpose we have started multiple series on our channel for the that are from prelims point of view and as well as from mains point of view so currently we have six series in which we cover your prelims uh, syllabus and one series that is your mains oriented so friends basically today is the lecture of ancient india series and the, we are on the lecture number 20 of it and uh, earlier what we used to do we used to upload five questions daily of each series that is 30 questions per day of each series but now we have changed our approach and we have picked up one series and we will cover load that a particular day to that series and we in on that particular day we will cover the mcqs of only that series for example today is the today is the day for ancient india tomorrow is the day for medieval india and uh, day after tomorrow is the day for modern india and, uh, and similarly in this way we cover six topics only two topics are not covered here on our on our channel that is economics and science and tech uh, and science and tech but we are start we are starting a series soon to cover both these seri these series as well so friends actually um i have uh, promised to you that i will upload the lecture at 2 pm but i was not able to upload due to some due to some uh, reservations that uh, that uh, that i was busy with with my some other work so sorry for delay so from tomorrow onwards you will get proper video at at proper 2 pm so you you can you plan your study accordingly so now we are covering uh, so today we are covering the lecture of ancient india and in this in this lecture we will cover uh we should have covered 30 questions but due to due to the limitations of time because i was busy somewhere so in this lecture i have only included 15 questions so let's cover the 15 questions of uh, this ancient india first question is the palva king who defeated pulakes in 2 and adopted the title of vatapi konda vas so friends uh, you might have heard about this that there was a king who defeated the pulakes in 2 that is the uh, ruler of Chal chalukyan ruler so and he adopted the title of vatapi konda so the, it is asked that who was who 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 was that king let me tell you friends that he was narsimha varman 1 that is b is the correct answer so here is a explanation so solution is um, b so here is explanation so let me provide you the explanation so it was pulakes in 2 was defeated by narsimha varman 1 and son and successor of mahendra varman 1 after his victory narsimha uh, varman 1 adopted the title of vatapi konda and he is said to also have defeated the chola siras pandyas and kalabras kalabras so this is about your first question let's move on to the second question second question is consider the following pairs so here we have been given a site and its age and we have to check whether they are appropriately matched or not here is uh, the site is kurnool and it is uh, age is said to be paleolithic the second site is bagor and it is said to be mesolithic and third is mehagar mehergarh it is neolithic so we have to choose that whether they are correctly matched or not so friends it is a simple question and uh, if you have covered your ncrts you will be easily uh, you will be able to answer this question easily so yes friends kurnool is a paleolithic site and uh, and bagor is a mesolithic site and let me tell you one more important point that uh, uh, the first evidence of uh, the earliest evidence of animal domestication came from bagor and mehergarh is the site from which the earliest farming communities emerged in indian subcontinent so all three are correctly matched so 1 2 3 is the answer so the solution is d so here the solution is d and all are correctly matched and in kurnool we have found we have found the traces traces of ash have been found which suggests that people were uh, were familiar with the use of fire so this is about your uh, second question and bagor bagor provides the earliest evidence for the domestication of animals and mehergarh was the was the area where where the uh, earliest farming communities in the indian subcontinent emerged next question is third question third question is with reference to tantricism so it says with reference to tantricism which spread in india about the 6th century ad consider the following statements first is it admitted both women and shudras into its ranks second it arose as a result of large scale admission of the aboriginal peoples in the brahmanical society 
third is it permeated buddhi buddhism and not jainism so we have to choose which of the following statements is correct so the options are a, a a b c d before you so let me tell you friends that yes uh, it it emerged in 6 ad and it was basically uh, it emerged as a result of large scale admission of aboriginal people in brahmanical societies the for example tribal peoples and 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 this tantricism uh, gained uh, importance in major religious religions of that time for example buddhism jainism and and also shaivism and vaishnavism so the third option third statement is incorrect but regarding the first statement yes first is correct that the women and shudras were admitted into the ranks of of uh, of of the tantricism so the solution is 1 and 2 only that is a so solution is a so there were remarkable development in religious fields and the emergence of tantricism took place large scale basically due to the large scale admission of arab original peoples in brahmanical society and to satisfy uh, basically to satisfy the it 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 basically dealt with to satisfy the material desires of devotees for physical possessions and to cure day to day injuries so both uh, women and men uh, shudras were also included in its, its ranks and it permeated both jainism and buddhism shaivism and as well as vaishnavism next question is fourth fourth question is which among the following is not a teaching similar teaching preached by both jainism and B buddhism philosophy buddhist philosophy a rejection of authority of vedas let me tell you friends ye that yes both the religions rejected the authority of vedas uh, b non theism yes they were both they were non theistic that is they they and they did not perceive a particular thing as god so they did not they were non theist non theists and uh, see uh, the i mean they the emphasis um, emphasis was on renunciation that is of worldly possessions so yes uh, third is also correct but let me tell you that d is not correct because friends absolute non violence was associated with jainism and not buddhism and buddhism uh, buddhist buddhist philosophy allowed allowed violence to a certain extent at uh, depending upon the circumstances so even we uh, we get a evidence of some some Buddh buddhist monks eating uh, eating meat so so solution is d Uh, that is absolute non violence it is not the teaching of buddhism so it is not a common teaching so uh, buddhism did not follow absolute non violence as per buddhist doctrine one can kill if it is necessary and also even the monks used the monks used to consume meat next is fifth question consider the following statements a varamahira discussed the concept of trigonometry uh, second aryabhatta was the first book to mention zero as a number third is brit samhita was the first action text to mention surgery so let me tell you friends that uh, that first statement is wrong varamahira did not discuss the concept of trigonometry uh, varamahira was actually a astronomer so he 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 wrote, wrote panch siddhantika in which he, he kind of uh, his book is panch siddhantika in which uh, in which he 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 gave the gave the summary of uh, popular uh, schools of, of uh, astronomy that were prevalent at that time so Bar varamahira did not uh, introduce the concept of trigonometry second question a uh, second statement is aryabhatta bharavat was the first book to mention zero so friends let me tell you this is also wrong actually the zero was for the first time mentioned by in brahms putik siddhanta so which which was basically uh, brahms which was which 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 also mentioned its use usage not only it mentioned the zero it also explained the rules concerning it and also algebraic algebra, algebraic uh, <coughs> algebraic calculations were done in it uh, that how uh, how the how the algebraic calculations have to be done they were they were they, they were explained in brahms putik siddhanta so second is also uh, 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 second is also incorrect regarding brit brit samhita was the first text to mention summary uh, surgery so friends let me tell you that this is also wrong because brit samhita brit samhita was not the first text to mention mention surgery and it has no relation with surgery it was actually a text of varamahira and he and and it it basically con it explains it in it in it varamahira in uh, discusses his his conception of astronomy so none of the statements is cor in, uh, is correct so the solution is d uh, so here is the explanation so aryabhatta discovered algebra and also formulated that area of triangle which led to the origin of trigonometry and varamahira in panch siddhantika gives the summary of five schools of astronomy present in and uh, present in his time and zero was discovered by brahmagupta in his brahmasputik siddhanta 
and uh, and he mentioned the zero as a number so he is considered the founder founder of uh, uh, zero so many perceived that aryabhata is as, uh, associated with zero so this is wrong let me tell you that brahm gupta is associated with the uh, kind of uh, disco dis discovery of uh, zero because uh, he f about he mentioned about this first time in the brahm sphutik brahm siddhanta and vara mehira wrote vrit samhita of 6th century ad which which is a work in the field of astronomy and, and there is no relation between vrit samhita and uh, astro and uh, surgery so this is all about your fifth question let's move on to the sixth question uh, sixth question is with reference to property in india consider the following st uh, statements pa pa property was present during harappan times uh, second natya shastra does not refer to the art of philosophy Thir uh, pa uh, sorry property and third is oldest written references found in tamil classic slapadi garam so here are the statements that we have to consider so let me tell you friends that all the statements are correct for the first time uh, when the excavations were, were done at the Harappan and uh, uh, Mohanjadado sites of Harappan civilization so there are evidences of petri as an art form and also friends uh, Natya Shastra, Shastra does not refer to the art of petri and also the oldest written reference is found in Silapadi Garam. Silapadi Garam is actually, is actually a, a kind of love tale between, between a, co uh, a courtesan named, uh, named Madhvi and and uh, uh, and and a uh, king named uh, his name was uh, I I am I'm, I'm not able to recall his name actually it, the king was uh, <coughs> Madhvi and uh, Kanagi was the wife of that king sorry I'm not able to recall it so uh, Kovalan so Kovalan was the uh, was the king so this is basically the this was basically uh, the uh, the, this is the Garam is the love tale of Kovalan and Madhvi. So the answer solution is D. So uh, so this is about your uh, this question and here is the explanation given in which you can read in detail in in explanation PDFs. Let's move on to the seventh question. Seventh question is consider the following statements regarding Sangam literature. First is Melan Mel Mel Melkanaku contains the major work of narrative text written during this period. Second is Tolka PM centers around a love story between a courtesan and a dignitary. Silapadi Garam deals with grammar and poetics. So friends, let me tell you as I have already explained to you uh, uh, in the in the previous in the previous few minutes that Silapadi Garam is not grammar and uh, is a book that it doesn't the, it isn't a book that deals with grammar and poetics. It is actually a book which uh, which uh, deals with the love story and Tolka PM is actually a grammar and poetics work. So second and third statement are incorrect. Uh, but yes, first statement is correct that Milan 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 Kanaku. Uh, is also uh, it, it is basically uh, a, it is a collection of uh, works that is of 18, that is 18 major works it is called Me Mel Kanaku so it, uh, it is a major work of narrative text written during the Sangam literature time so this is solution is the, the first statement is correct so the solution is B only sorry one only so solution is B so this is about major 18 works were called as uh, Melan Kanaku and 18 minor works were called Kilan, uh, Kil Kan Kil Kanaku. So the many of the social events are presented in these literature like economy in ancient times showing the sho uh, extra showing the social evolution. So Tolka PM is basically a, a book on uh, on uh, grammar. It deals with grammar and there is now Silapadi Garam which deals with the story of uh, Kovalan and Madhvi and uh, and basically there is also one more book that is Mani McClay and it, it basically tells about the adventures of the daughter that born out of the union of Kovalan and Madhvi. So this is about your seventh question. Let's move on to the eighth question. Eighth question is consider the following statements with regard to the life spent by Hyun Sang, a Chinese traveler in India. First is he visited India during the Chandra rule of Chandragupta II. Second is he studied Buddhism at Takshila University. Third is he translated Buddhist texts into uh, in Sanskrit into Chinese. So let me tell you friends that Hyun Sang did not visit during the time of Chandragupta II. He visited during the uh, during the reign of Harshvardhan. So there is an easy way to remember it. H uh, H is uh, H, H for Hyun Sang and H for Harshvardhan. So you can remember so, uh, it in this way. 
so uh, her, uh, so first statement is clearly incorrect because yun sang visited during the rule of uh, harshvardhan and regarding second it is also in, uh, regarding second it is also incorrect he d- didn't studied at takshila university he studied at uh, at uh, nalanda university so this is also incorrect and next is he translated buddhist text written into in sanskrit into chinese that thing is correct so only one statement is correct that is c so uh, please remember it that he visited during the reign of harshvardhan and he studied in nalanda university and not takshila university actually the ruler of chandragupta uh, of the mauryan dynasty that is chandragupta maurya he studied at takshila university but but not the uh, hyun sang Uh, so he studied at uh, at nalanda university and he explains uh, also uh, the important information about the nalanda university and the uh, philosophy taught there and other things taught there we are uh, we get a considerable uh, detail in uh, from the from the mentions of yun sang only so the solution is c so this is about your explanation part which you can see in the uh, in the explanation pdf let's move on to the ninth question um, ninth question is with which school of indian philosophy the theory of, theory of karma is associated so you might have heard about the theory of karma it is a household name in a household philosophy in india uh, in which we say that uh, one reaps the, ben- uh, the the consequences of its previous um, uh, we can say that one 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 gets the punishment so and as well as uh, Uh, pra- uh, kind of uh, happy things that happen in this life the, the relation of these things is with the with your past life so this philosophy is associated with a yog b vedant c visheshika d mimamsa so let me tell you friends that the option correct is vedanta it is vedanta school of philosophy in which the theory of karma is found so it means basically means a person in his present birth has to bear consequences of his actions performed in his previous birth So the solution is B. That is Vedanta. Let's move on to the tenth question. Tenth question is consider the following statements about shri- shrines of the temple in earlier times. Uh, friends, uh, here we have to ask the uh, statement. We have to consider the statement regarding the temple. Temples in earlier times. First is Sandhara type or shrines without pradakshina pradakshina patha. Second is Narendra type or shrines with pradakshina patha. Third is Sarv Sarvota Bhadra or shrines which can be accessed from all sides. so we have to choose which of the following is correct so let me tell you friends that uh, in, uh, in 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 ancient times particularly in uh, uh, in nagara in nagara style of temple ar- architecture what what was basically there there were different kinds of shrines, uh, shrines basically three kinds of shrines were there that is sandhara nirandra and sarv sarvatbhadra and they were so called depending upon the existence of uh, pradakshina patha that is kind of uh, uh, circumambulation around the around the main shrine so sandhara were type of shr- uh, shrines in which the in the main shrine Uh, didn't have the had the uh, pre dakshina patha and nirandra type were the shrines with pre dakshina patha and third yes fourth bhadra was the shrines which they, they they were the shrines which can be basically accessed from all the sides so the so the uh, finest example of this is the is the is we can uh, say uh, there is temple of uh, vishnu temple at at deogad so that it is the best example so the solution is d that all of these is correct that the sandhara type of shrines were without praks pradakshina patha nirandra types were shrines with pradakshina patha and sarvato bhadra were shrines which cannot be accessed from or which can be accessed from all sides so this is all about your uh, uh, um, tenth question let's move on to the eleventh question eleventh question is with reference to buddhist literature consider the following statements first is milind pano is a non canonical buddhist literature second is jataka tales are canonical buddhist literature third is theri gatha literature describes monks experience of renunciation so we have to choose which of the following above statements are correct so let me tell you friends that uh, that what is the difference between canonical and non canonical text basically canonical text is a sacred text which which deals with the uh, with the basic tenets of a particular religion so so uh, basically buddhist literature in this sense has three pitakas that is uh, sut pitaka vidham pitaka and uh, and vinaya pitaka that that are that are the kind of we can say canonical buddhist texts so milind pano is basically the discussion between a king indo greek king milind and and uh, and our a sage named uh, uh, named nagsen under whose influence milind adopted uh, the buddhism so basically milind asks the questions of of relating to Buddhi- buddhism uh, to this uh, to this sage that is nagsen 
and and after 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 influenced by his answers he adopted the buddhism so first is correct that it is a non canonical buddhist literature it, it doesn't it is it, it is not sacred literature it is basically a, a type of questions asked by melind to to sage uh, uh, nagsen regarding the second question yes uh, second statement second statement yes friends it is correct because basically jatka toils are the, the canonical buddhist literature they deal with the uh, basic tenets of buddhism regarding the third statement friends therigata this is wrong because this literature is basically basically a, a kind of uh, uh, they, they are basically in it there are songs for for buddhist nuns who who uh, they, and and this this is uh, the one of the earliest works that were composed by women and uh, in it there are songs that were that were uh, sung by buddhist nuns so the straight third statement is incorrect so the correct answer is b that is one and two only so the solution is b so here is explanation so you can see it in detail in the explanation pdf let's move on to your 12th question 12th question is uh, many early sculptures did not show buddha in human form instead they showed his presence through symbols which among the following pairs are correctly matched so friends let me tell you that uh, 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 that many earlier sculptures did not show buddha in in human form they used to draw his symbols so we have to identify the symbols and with which thing they are referred they are associated first stoop that is meditation second wheel the first sermon third empty seat mahaparinirvana uh, uh, fourth horse renunciation fifth elephant incarnate incarnation so let me tell you friends that the first is incorrect because stoop is not uh, associated with meditation meditation actually it was it is it is associated with mahaparinirvana and regarding the empty seat uh, empty seat is associated with uh, meditation so these are they are nothing but the things are interchanged so first and third is uh, are are incorrect because but the second and fourth and fifth are correct the wheel is associated with the first sermon of uh, of uh, lord buddha at sarnath after which it is considered that the lord buddha turned the the wheel of dharma and uh, 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 and also horse is associated with renunciation because when 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 L lord buddha rena renounced his worldly possessions he he left on a horse and elephant is associated with our incarnation because before the uh, birth of uh, buddha the 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 mother of uh, the, the mother of the lord uh, saw elephant in her dream so elephant is associated with incarnation so the so solution is uh, as first and three is wrong so the solution would be two four and five only that is c so the solution is c so already i have explained to you in detail about the explanation regarding 13th third, question lord shiva 13th uh, question is lord shiva's image is sometimes shown with three heads like the image of mahesh murti murti uh, murti at elephanta caves it symbolizes birth so friends uh, sometimes Sh lord shiva is uh, shown with three heads and for example mahesh murti at elephanta caves so what it symbolizes first a different forms of shiva uh, which includes bhairava uma and uma and shiva himself uh, b is fierce peace, peaceful and feminine forms of shiva c presence of shiva in all directions d both the statement a and b are correct in this context so let me tell you friends that the correct answer is d that is both a and b statements are correct because it it basically represents three different forms of shiva which includes bhairava uma and shiva himself and also the second state uh, second statement is incorrect because the middle face of uh, the the lord shiva represents the peaceful meditation stage and his left face represents uh, are the expressions of his feminine forms that is uma and uh, and and the right face uh, is with with the kind of fierce eyes and uh, uh, filled with anger and uh, are, are is is uh, is associated with bhairava so the correct answer is is d that is both the statements a and b are correct in this context so solution is d so mahesh murti is basically found in elephanta caves and there are different expressions on it and uh, uma basically represents the feminine character and it is on the left side and on the right side is the is the fierce face uh, uh, which is uh, the right face is of bhairav and which which clearly shows the anger and bulging eyes of of lord shiva let's move on to the 14th question with reference to mahajanpadas and sanghas consider the following statements first statement is while most mahajanpadas were monarchies some 
सम नोन एज गणास और संघास वर ओलीगार्की और ओलीगार्ची सेकेंड इज वाइल बुद्धा बिलोंग्स टू अ संघा महावीरा वॉज फ्रॉम अ महाजनपदा सो लेट मी टेल यू फ्रेंड्स दैट द फर्स्ट इज करेक्ट दैट देर वर बेसिकली सिक्सटीन मोनार्कीज सिक्सटीन महाजनपदाज एंड मोस्ट ऑफ दैम वर मोनार्कीज बट देर वर सम अदर्स दैट वर ओलीगार्ची दैट दैट इज दे वर रूल्ड बाय अ नंबर ऑफ रूलर दैट अ नंबर ऑफ राजा सो पावर वॉज नॉट हेल्ड बाय अ मोनार्क बट इट वॉज डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड अमंग डिफरेंट राजाज सो फर्स्ट इज करेक्ट एंड दे दे वर एफर टू एज गणाज और संघास रिगार्डिंग सेकेंड स्टेटमेंट फ्रेंड सेकेंड स्टेटमेंट इज रॉन्ग बिकॉज बोथ बुद्धा एज वेल एज महावीरा बिलोंग टू बिलोंग बिलोंग्स टू गणास और संघास सो सो द करेक्ट आंसर इज द ओनली स्टेटमेंट करेक्ट इज फर्स्ट दैट इज वन सो द करेक्ट आंसर इज ए दैट इज वन ओनली सो सोल्यूशन इज ए सो हेयर यू कैन सी अबाउट द डिटेल्स सो बेसिकली देर वर मल्टीपल मल्टीपल महाजनपदास दैट वर मैंशन इन बुद्धिस्ट एंड जनरल लिटरेचर सो लेट्स मूव ऑन टू द फिफ्टींथ क्वेश्चन दैट इज द लास्ट क्वेश्चन ऑफ टू डेज लेक्चर बिकॉज द शॉर्टेज ऑफ टाइम आई आई वॉज नॉट एबल टू कम्प्लीट द थर्टी क्वेश्चन बट फ्रॉम टू बारो ऑन बर्ड यू विल गेट विल बी गेटिंग थर्टी क्वेश्चन इन ईच लेक्टर लेक्चर सो फिफ्टींथ एज कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट्स रिगार्डिंग मेजोलिथिक एज एंड टूल्स एसोसिएटेड विद इट फर्स्ट इज इट इज अ ट्रांजिशनल फेज बिटवीन पेलोलिथिक एज एंड न्योलिथिक एज सेकेंड इज पीपल लिवड ऑन हंटिंग फिशिंग एंड फूड गैदरिंग थर्ड इज दे यूज टूल्स ऑफ पोलिस स्टोन एंड पर्टिकुलरली यूज स्टोन एक्स सो वी हैव टू चूज द करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट एंड नाउ दे आर मेड इन द कंटेक्सट ऑफ मेजोलिथिक एज सो लेट मी टेल यू फ्रेंड्स दैट द फर्स्ट स्टेटमेंट इज करेक्ट दैट इट वॉज अ ट्रांजिशनल फेज बिटवीन पेलोलिथिक एज एंड न्योलिथिक एज रिगार्डिंग द सेकेंड स्टेटमेंट येस फ्रेंड्स पीपल लिवड ऑन हंटिंग फिशिंग एंड फिशिंग एंड फूड गैदरिंग बट द थर्ड स्टेटमेंट इज नॉट करेक्ट बिकॉज द पोलिस स्टोन आर द characteristics of neolithic age and not the mesolithic age actually the the the, the tools that were used during the mesolithic age they were known as microliths so the polish tools only came to be used in neolithic age of uh, uh, human evolution so the correct statement is 1 and 2 only so the solution is a so here i have explained to you in great detail about this so friends this is all about our lecture and uh, and let me tell you friends that if you want to subscribe to the explanation pdf of these lectures then these these are the details so friends uh, we have six series currently that is environment and ancient india medieval india modern india geography and polity so basically we are covering your six series uh, for your prelims preparation we are targeting the uh, targeting uh, 2019 uh, prelims and for that purpose we have started this six, six series so if you want to get the explanation pdfs also then you can subscribe to this initiative and friends we will cover these explanation pdfs till 31st may so you uh, already we are on the lecture number 20 of ancient india so you have uh, uh, earlier we used to cover five questions in one lecture and now we are covering 30 questions so these will be covered till 31st may because on 2nd june is your prelims and we will end these series mcq series only one day before your prelims exam so friends uh, the cost is very minimum that we have kept so you are seeing the cost that is kept for this and let me tell you friend that it is not the cost of a single pdf that you will get for example of uh, uh, today we have covered ancient india so rupees 100 is not the not not for the today's pdf actually it is the it is it is for the entire pdf that we have we have already covered uh, till till this date and the and the for forthcoming pdf that we will upload on our channel till 31st may so you can see that uh, if if uh, if we have covered 19 lectures of ancient india then you can multiply it with 5 then approximately 95 questions are already covered 95 questions have already been covered so in this we have covered 15 15 more questions so 110 questions are covered until 31st may we will continue to upload these series and and by the by the day as 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 we will cover daily 30 questions not not daily uh, but after one week so approximately in one we in in one month we will be approximately covering 120 to 150 questions so in this manner uh, you have five months for your prelims and uh, and we will cover approximately f- uh, five six uh, f- uh, four four to approximately we will be covering 13 14 more lectures of it so daily you will be in this way you will get 13 questions so all these pdf you can get in just rupees 50 uh, rupees 100 so for environment we have kept the minimum cost 
and for medieval india also it is 100 so you will be getting all the pdfs in this amount it is not for one pdf so in case if you want to subscribe to all the series so let me tell you the total amounts to rupees 950 but the complete package is available in rupees 800 that is we are giving a discount of rupees 150 on complete package and if you want to subscribe to the complete package then you can whatsapp us at this number that is 8968426481 so at this number you can contact us and you will you can subscribe to our this initiative the of videos that we upload daily so and uh, the, uh, this is about your uh, all details so friends let me also tell you that why it is important to subscribe to these explanation pdfs because at the end of the day you will not be able to revise the whole syllabus by seeing videos because at that time you will have multiple topics to revise and uh, reading and seeing long videos will be ultimately a wastage of time and also at that time you will not be able to revise syllabus through through bulky books well, uh, that or standard books because at that time you will have a pressure to complete the syllabus in minimum time to revise it in maximum uh, to revise it in maximum times in minimum in the minimum available time so at that time it the question answer format is the most suitable format because in this format when you go for a question you also go for its solution and as, as well as its explanation so you get the idea that why a particular option is correct and why other options are not correct so this explanation part is very important in UPSC because in UPSC you must have clear concepts uh, seeing a question and its solution is not the answer for for uh, for clearing the prelims seeing the explanation in detail is the is 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 uh, in in detail is much needed in the upsc preparation so if you want to subscribe you can subscribe to our initiative and friends let me tell to you the timetable the timetable is here that we daily upload mains questions based on current affairs daily at 10:30 uh, a.m and on monday we cover ancient india with its 30 questions but actually today i was busy so only 15 questions were covered and on tuesdays we cover medieval india and wednesday is modern india and thursday polity and friday geography and saturday environment and ecology and on sunday we conduct a mains revision test of 10 questions so if you are interested in any of us our series you can subscribe to our initiative so this is all about today's lecture friends if you liked it please like it please share it with your friends and if you have any suggestion you can make it make it uh, you can comment in the comment box i will certainly consider your suggestion and friends do not forget to press uh, to to subscribe to our channel please subscribe to our channel and also do not forget to pr pr press the bell icon because then only you will get all the notifications of important updates that we do on our youtube channel rela in relation to upsc csc 2019 so thank you friends thank you very